In 2020, I bought a property and shot the biggest buck of my life of it. In this video, we're gonna show you how to do the same. So I came about this property in the spring last year. Um, I actually had sent a letter. So what I did was I found, you know, Onyx gives you the opportunity to kind of find these landowner names. And I found the landowner names for a couple of properties that I was interested in, which was one of them was here. Sent a letter to the address and you kind of, you don't get a whole lot of response when it comes to that. But uh, I ended up getting a response on it and ended up just kind of striking a deal, long story short. Uh, buying the property based off of something that I found on, on X and I knew you know growing up here that there was deer in the area So fast forward through the summer a little bit some of the things that I did I did some chainsaw work uh, Our buddy Adam had kind of told me that was something I should probably do I actually have not been back into the woods to look at that chainsaw leaf work since I did it The idea was to let sunlight in and to get vines growing up some honeysuckle or whatever that the deer are going to use to as cover bedding um, and that kind of thing the idea is that there's there's food in that cover, right? But I'm I'm feeding out here, and so that's something I did all summer. So I'm trying to relate bedding close to that for does to use, knowing that in the fall when the rut comes about, these bucks are going to all of a sudden run into a property where there's 12 or 15 does using it pretty habitually, and they're going to smell all that scent, and they're going to know that's the place they need to hang out more often. And you know, we have a hog problem around here, so it kind of eats into your feeding bill, and it also creates a social pressure on the deer. So with that. Uh, I decided that I needed to shoot some hogs, and so we, we shot a few, we shot some with bows, check out that video, and then we also, uh, you know, I, I spent a couple times in the evenings just walking out here with a gun, and if they were out here, you know, let them have it. And it kept them away enough that by the time the season came around, um, I was able to keep most of them kind of off the corn and not, they weren't super interested in it. Uh, another way that I kept the hogs off of it, and we'll show you that here in just a second, is my feeder pen uh, that I made. And I, when I say feeder pen, there's actually not a feeder in it, but it's where I'm putting corn. Um, I made it big and spacious so that the deer would feel comfortable, namely the bucks, uh, would feel comfortable jumping into this thing and not feeling boxed in. You know, the bigger you can make this thing, the more it's like a pasture with a fence around it, right? So that's the idea. I wanted to grow up native grasses, which I did a lot of that. We got partridge pea uh, that grew up to five, six foot, and we've got blue stem and uh, a couple other, you know, switch grasses and that kind of thing. Um, so the idea today is to go into the woods, scout, make assumptions based off of what I saw in the field or the pasture this year during the, during the fall and try to understand uh, what the deer are doing, how they're using the property, and how we can better adapt the habitat this coming year and uh, for the deer to use this property and to benefit from this property and then also how we can make, that a, make it a more huntable property as well. So with that, check this out. This is my feeder pen right here. So a lot of time with TSI or forest stand improvement, timber stand improvement, uh, people are trying to lay over trees to make deer go a certain path, right? So they have an opportunity as a bow hunter or even sometimes a rifle hunter to make a good shot. I kind of did the same thing here. This thing is so big, a deer could come straight out of the field here and jump in. If I was sitting in that tree over there, uh, I've got a 40 yard shot, best. I want shots that are close. So actually, uh, this was like some hot wire that was running around on my property. Uh, when I bought it, I, t I pulled a bunch of it up and then I strung it around the top and only left a few gaps where they could come in. And uh, they actually, a lot of them came here on the back side. I didn't expect that. I thought they'd come from the woods and dip right in there. But when I shot that buck, that's actually what happened. He came from the woods and came in right, you know, he came across me at 20 yards and I could have shot him before he ever got there. But uh, you know how that goes with a camera in your hand or in your stand sometimes. So anyway, it's probably pretty dark back in there. So we're gonna dip into the woods real quick and we'll come back out and uh, talk about what we found. Anything that shielded uh, or screened from the edge there, I would leave. So shorter cedars and stuff like that. And then I tried to cut uh, cedars back in here that didn't provide a whole lot of cover and, and elms as well. I did some of that. You can always go back and cut later, but you know, you can't bring them back once you cut them. It's a very kind of uh, nerve wracking thing to an extent, uh, but something that I think is definitely needed to be done. So let's go look at more intensive cutting back in here when I did. It actually stayed a good trail. So. Like, I don't know. 
So we're in that spot that Tyler did the uh, cutting last summer, or fall, or whenever you did it. I think it was summer. summer. I was yeah. Very much sweaty. <laughs> and uh, we're just kind of admiring how much sunlight it really did let in, and how there's some browse and stuff around. And then uh, he walked up a trail over here, and I went this direction. And lo and behold, here's a scrape right here, right in the middle of this big cut. So uh, that pretty much tells you that uh, deer used it more or less than the past. We don't really know because it's the yeah. first winter, but. I mean, you can't see a scrape and think it's a bad thing. Yeah, it's a convergence of trails. Yeah, there's there's a heavy trail going that way and then a real heavy main trail that leads back in the woods that way and boom, right there. That's almost like a eerily similar to the one that you killed in Illinois on. It's true, yeah. that is very true. Mm -hmm. So uh, it might be something good to keep track of and see if there's deer hitting this in the summer, you know, making it a uh, year round scrape. Never mind, it's got sand in it now, over. Yeah. About to get smoke city <laughs> next Friday. A low is 17. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's bad. So Tyler's talked a lot about wanting to convert this old pasture into more of this brushy type stuff. This is Chickasaw Plum. You can see there's probably, I don't know, 400 square foot, maybe a little more right here of good plum thicket and there's a lot of bigger trees. Plum, especially Chickasaw Plum, is interesting because it'll sucker off the roots. What'll happen is you'll have you know, a tree that's the size of a baseball bat in there, and then it'll have roots that spread out surface level underneath the ground. And from those roots, new trees will sprout. So I think what he's gonna try to do is plant, not groupings of trees, but individual mother trees around out here in his pasture and hope that, you know, five to 10 years from now, that tree will then end up making a bigger and bigger thicket. And, I mean, on my property, you can kind of see where this will happen. I've got probably close to an acre of plum thicket, and it's awesome. The does love it. They bed in there in the daytime and winter all the time. These fall probably late July, something like that. That's not really the time of year when you're going to shoot a deer, of course, but... Um, They're not super beneficial necessarily, but like for a couple of weeks, yeah. it's a rage fest. But year-round food is awesome. Yeah. And it's an opportunity for you to get velvet bucks exactly. on camera. And then like... Good bedding too. Yeah, you know, great bedding. And there's going to be leaves on it and they browse the leaves all year long. And I bet you they're eating these buds right now. This thing's actually budding out. When they stop dropping, you know, say early August, maybe that's when your persimmons yeah. kind of take over. And, and that's and, what, you know, this persimmon tree right here, well, there's actually four of them here, but there's two big ones. And one that's kind of the mother I think. and you know this thing produced till uh, it was producing in december uh, essentially it still had persimmons on it in december you can see there's a lot of caps up there what i did to kind of help hopefully help this tree produce better this year and i don't know we'll see if it continues to do that year after year but I, you can tell I took out a ton of these elms uh, right in here, these cedars as well. They were just kind of growing up in this and choking it out. And you can see how a lot of the, the lower limbs are not really there anymore or not very prolific. And so uh, hopefully giving it some space, killing some of the trees around it, allowed it to uh, absorb more nutrients and water uh, as rain, rain happened this spring and summer. Well, technically this summer, because when I did this was in the late spring. And um, you know, hopefully we're gonna do a little bit of uh, grafting off of this tree, right? Yeah, I'd love to take, if you look, so this is like really basic level grafting because I'm not that good at it either, but the new growth of a year is called a scion. And that's what these are right here. You can see they're actually dried out and dead. That happens to a lot of the scions on these trees. But if you look up higher, and even maybe this could still be scion from earlier in the year, I don't know. But either way, you look up higher on this tree up here, there are some really, you know, kind of pencil sized scion, something like that that you can take off and then top work onto some small trees. Like for instance, um, there's some out in the pasture out there. We'll show you in a little bit, but like even this old, you know, pushed over persimmon that has new growth right here. You could take, cut one of those off and graft that. And uh, then you'd be guaranteed to have a clone of what that tree is doing up there, at least on that branch. So technically like this tree, for instance, what I would think you would want to do is maybe try three grafts, like one here, one here, one here, and then trim all the other stuff back. Try to get all the nutrients going to those three. Maybe one of them takes, and then you take the other two out and then you kind of 
technically uh, re rejuvenation pruned this tree and then it becomes one solid one after that off of that that's producing more lots of opportunity there you got persimmons all the way down the fence row down there too yeah too, there's so. there and they're growing they're coming up in the pasture right out here in front where coyotes are eating them and you know uh releasing the seeds defecating <laughs> defecating out in the pasture and that's essentially what i'm trying to get is this pasture to grow up into persimmons and plum thickets a little bit here a little bit there you know a biologist that casey and i know has talked and we've talked about this on the podcast about like the softball toss uh theory where like you take a softball and you toss it 30 40 yards and there should be another group of cover there essentially mm -hmm. so i'm going to try to make that <clears throat> happen here you know and going forward on this property uh we have a lot to discuss but we've got a lot of time throughout the spring and summer to figure this out but i do know that deer tend to come out right over here kind of in the middle of my tree line essentially and work their way down this way when I'm feeding down here. Um, I've seen them come in and hit the persimmons right here. I've actually accidentally created a barrier, kind of a pocket right here out of all the trees that I trimmed where they don't want to come in from the backside. So they actually come out in the pasture. I get to see them, get to get them on camera, you know, a trail camera and that kind of thing, and then see them come in here and I can watch them from several stand locations feed right here. So the idea is to continue to keep deer coming out in hopefully a very centralized location uh, and coming from a certain direction, which is to the west there, I think, most of the time. And if that's the case, I think uh, I have plenty of wind options on this property. And so that's my idea before this old, this new field turns into old field uh, and looks really good and creates habitat for bedding and stuff like that that's actually out in the pasture. Uh, then I'm going to have to reassess my hunting strategy on that. So. Uh, pretty excited about the property. Only gets better though. Oh, that's the thing is you're yeah. hoping that you have the more habitat you have, the more deer you have, so the more opportunities you have, the more bucks you have. You know, ideally you're not just hunting one buck. You know, you're hunting. It's like, oh, I've got you know three that are over four years old. So, hopefully going forward that's the case. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Um, hopefully you know you enjoyed some of that footage as well. Um, I had a great year here in November, and I spent a lot of days here. And it's really cool when you get a chance to. Uh, find a property especially in your area if you've paid attention for several years you can find uh you can figure out where deer you know are hanging out where uh big bucks maybe are coming from in, in the area in the county whatever and get into a particular small property that gives you the opportunity to hunt those deer and like i said those bucks are only here in november in october november december pretty much so as long as I keep the does here, I think that's going to be consistent for me, and um, and it works because it's hunting season, right? And that's when you yeah. want the bucks there. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you found something good here. If you got any questions, comment below, and remember, this is your element. Living it. Mm -hmm.